Michigan Out of Doors Online is brought to you in part by Mr. Muskie Charters, offering full-service guided fishing trips for walleye, muskie, bass, and sturgeon on Lake St. Clair and the Detroit and St. Clair Rivers. Booking information is online at mrmuskycharters.com. By Grilla Grills of Holland, Michigan, makers of wood pellet, charcoal grills, and professional pellet smokers. Grilla Grills are designed for ease of use to improve your grilling or smoking skills. More information at GrillaGrills.com. Hey everybody, welcome to Michigan Out of Doors. Well, I am here in my hometown of Ludington, Michigan, where I grew up, here doing a little big lake fishing. That'll be on in a couple of weeks, but on this week's show, we're going to start by doing some smallmouth fishing on the Grand River, kind of an overlooked fishery. You won't want to miss that. Jordan Brown is going to take us onto the river to do a little hex fishing after dark. You won't want to miss that. And I think we're going to have time for a wild turkey recipe as well. So lots of good stuff on this week's show. You stay tuned. I'm Jimmy Gretzinger. It's time for Michigan out of doors. From the first spring rains to the soft summer breeze, dancing on the pine forest floor. The autumn colors catch your eyes, here come the crystal winter skies. It's Michigan, Michigan out of doors. What a beautiful day in the woods. Someday our children all will see this is their finest legacy. The wonder and the love of Michigan as the wind comes whispering through the trees. The sweet smell of nature's in the air. From the Great Lakes to the quiet stream, shining like a sportsman's dream. It's a love of Michigan we all share. Michigan Out of Doors is presented by by Country Smokehouse, a sportsman's meat processor and Michigan destination since 1988. Offers a variety of homemade smoked meats and Michigan-made products in-store and online. The Country Smokehouse features an outdoor barbecue and bar. Details at CountrySmokehouse.com. By AnglerQuest Pontoons, a mid-Michigan company building boats for fishermen by fishermen. AnglerQuest Pontoons are designed for comfort and functionality. On the web at AnglerQuestPontoons.com. To those who say we can't build a healthy economy while protecting the environment, DTE Energy has something to say. We're already doing it. Because you don't get to the forefront of cleaner, efficient energy by talking about it. DTE Energy. Soaking in the rich tradition of Michigan hunting for over 30 years, Vanguard is proud to sponsor our friends at Michigan Out of Doors TV. the second largest drainage system in the in the state of Michigan so um, but uh, there are times if we don't get any rain for quite some time and it's low this can be gin clear huh. um, and then you do a lot of sight fishing for for the bass they spook super easy that's why we want some stain it makes it a little bit easier so today we're just gonna throw some some slash baits X wraps um, some maps and um, we're just going to cover the high probability spots is what we're going to do for today. And yeah, how do you kind of pick a spot on a river like this? Um, after guiding on it for so long, <laughs> you kind of have, have the places. But generally speaking, what, what you do is, is, is you look for structure um, anywhere you can find um, rocks, particularly rocks. Um, there's some rock gardens that are on here that are, that are high producers. Um, weed lines uh, for the pike. We look for the slack water for the pike. Um, usually at some times on the beginning of the islands, uh, the, the smallmouth will hold up right there right before it breaks. It creates uh, some slack water and they like to hold in the slack water. Um, a lot of times we'll just float down and just cast towards the bank. And, um, but anywhere you can find any type of structure, you're generally going to find smallmouth. And where you find one, generally you're going to find other ones as well too. That's a good one. That's a big one. It's a big one. They're fighters. They are fighters. Whew. He's not quite ready yet. <laughs> he definitely isn't. That's the thing. You know, there's a good, there's a reason why the good Lord didn't create a 12-pound smallmouth. <laughs> You'd never get him into the boat. Wow. All right, let's get. 
get this thing in here. Well, I wish I could say they were all this size, but uh, we'll take it. <laughs> Let's see this bad boy. Was that on the spinner or was that on the body bait? Uh, yeah, got a jerk bait here. So oh, he's looks like yeah, he's a little hooked. Let's see here. Yeah, we got a little hooked. It's all right. Right here in the mouth. <laughs> Among other things. Oh, it's in the mouth. That's cool. This is a good one. There. Nice. Well, right. we're. You know, Tom, you put your fishing pole away, and I uh, pretty much I had done the same oh, thing. I, right in the corner I, there. Yeah. I actually already uh, already had my hook on the reel and everything, and then. Uh, well, he hit that one pretty good. He, he did. No, I got it. So yeah, that's a uh, beautiful Grand River smallmouth right there. Oh, that's, that's, a, that's a dandy. <laughs> When you think of good smallmouth destinations here in our state, I have to say the Grand River was not in my top few, but maybe it should be. So the smallmouth fishery on the Grand, it's actually one of the best smallmouth fisheries in the state of Michigan. Um, it's tough because it's a big river system, but when you find them and you land into them, it's not unusual to get them in the, you know, plus 16 inch range, um, which is a solid fish for this area. Uh, the one that Ted just pulled in, what'd that tape out Ted at? 18 and a half. 18. Eight, 18 and a half, that's a solid fish. And um, yeah, this is like I said, one of the best smallmouth fisheries in the state of Michigan. It's always good to learn a few new techniques for targeting fish in the river. Here's one that Tom says is tried and true for him. So basically what we're doing is we're using a technique called dredging. And so what I'll do is I'll cast this out on a 45 degree angle. And that gives it in the current time to hit the bottom. And then basically I let the current take it across the bottom. And as it goes across the bottom, it bounces and it hits the rock. And the rock, when this is hitting the rock, will create a vibration and the fish will pick it up on its lateral lines. And then I sweep it through the current to another 45 degree angle. And then I stop and I reel it in. And the bite is very subtle um, because the fish is picking it up off the bottom. And so you'll just kind of feel these little taps, which is the bottom. And then all of a sudden it'll stop and then you'll feel a little tap and that's the fish picking it up. And so it's a very finesse type of a fishing technique that we use right here. There we go. Right on the dredge? On the dredge, right at the, right at the bank there. Nice red eye on that. Yeah, it yeah. does. I like to hear folks' background and how they got into fishing. And most of the guys and ladies that start doing some guiding, well, they fish most of their lives and just want to do it more. Or like Tom, want to keep it in the family. Um, my son and I own Workman Outfitters, and we got started in that. Basically, he's fished all his life, and it's something that he's always wanted to do. And so he graduated from high school, and got a, he got a drift boat, and decided to start uh, guiding and he didn't know too much about how to run a business so I said I'll be a partner with you in it. So we first bought a drift boat and then we bought a jet boat and um, yeah we just kind of got started into that. I'm also an owner in a, in a fly fishing lodge and I asked him if he wanted to, to guide up there and he said no I don't and at first I was kind of like well why not? And he said, well, Dad, you have other partners in that, and what if you decide to sell? Then I'm left with nothing, so why don't we start our own business? And so we did. And so about three years ago, we launched Workman Outfitters, and we primarily guide on the, on the Grand River and its tributaries, um, and have been doing that yeah, now for about three years. During the summer months, he heads up to Alaska, and he guides at, uh, at a lodge up there. So then I'll run guide trips uh, during the summer when he's up there, and then he comes back, then he runs the steelhead and salmon and trout trips when he comes back. Fishing weaves a thread through our lives. That's a good one, there we go. Nice job, Ted. Get that other, uh, get that other leg back, maybe. See another leg in there? <laughs> See another leg in there? No, no there other go. leg. The Grand River gets a bad rap sometimes, and it shouldn't. Are there better spots to catch huge smallies? Well, yes, and Lake St. Clair comes to mind. But if you live in mid-Michigan, the Grand River is just about in your backyard. And we never saw another boat today near Lowell where we put in. You may want to give it a try. Just another example of what our great state has to offer 
here in Michigan's Out of Doors. Well, as you can see, we had a ton of fun with Tom and Ted out there on the river, and it's kind of interesting how we get stories here at Michigan Out of Doors. Tom actually was featured by a group called Experiencing Grand Rapids, and we saw the video that they did on Tom and his outfitting business, him and his son, and so we thought, you know what, we should hit the water with them. So here's just a little snippet of the video that caught our eye and brought him to Michigan Out of Doors. My name is Tom Workman, and I'm the owner and guide at Workman Outfitters. We primarily guide on the Grand River and a few other area rivers near Grand Rapids, Michigan. We fish right downtown Grand Rapids. In order to get to where you got to get to, you've got to jump these little mini coffers. You see a bunch of white water, and then you see this little dam below you as you go over it, and you wonder if you're going to hit it. Yeah, our clients get a little more than a, than a fishing trip. They get, a, they get an adventure ride. Huge, fat, big, long beasts. If you want to catch fish, the Grand is one of the best steelhead and smallmouth bass rivers in the state of Michigan. Oh! Oh! <laughs> when they're running, they're running. You can catch fish 10 for 20, 10 for 25. Not bad fishing. the Grand River is one of ruin to recovery and the river now has really become a, a very vibrant and ecologically healthy river. There's 252 dams through the Grand River and its tributaries. Uh, one of the things that will help the Grand River become restored is as these dams slowly get removed starting with 6th Street Dam in Grand Rapids. Once dams start to become removed, that just means a much more healthy fishery, a much more diverse fishery. So we see that as, as a benefit with those dams being removed, particularly Sixth Street Dam. When I hook the fish, when I land the fish and I bring it to the boat and then I release this fish, I have a connection to all things wild at that point. And for me, it, it really is about that connection. My son, Max, is a fly fishing guide as well. One of the things that I wanted to do by creating the business with him was to be able to weave a thread through our lives. And this allows us an opportunity to, to really expand our relationship into a different realm than I think what most parents aren't able to do with their kids. I think Grand Rapids will continue to grow, it will be, continue to become diversified, it will be a very dynamic city, and it's our hope that as that gets more developed that people will continue to have that connection to the Grand River so that the city can continue to be vibrant. Because really, you know, not to be cliche, but, but a river does run through it. Hi, I'm Jordan Brown, and for our next segment on this week's show, I was up in northern Michigan tagging along with a father and son team chasing trout after dark. We're in a northern Michigan river this evening and uh, we're going to chase the giant mayfly called the hex or the hexagena lombata. Um, this is a, a giant mayfly. We wait for it all year. Um, happens for about 10 days every year and this bug, particular bug comes out of uh, mucky flats or mucky bottoms in the river and uh, it'll, the fly will emerge off the water and, um, and fly up the river uh, primarily. And what we're going to be doing is we're going to be uh, trying to catch trout that are feeding on these flies um, towards dark here tonight or just after dark. The, we'll, we're starting to see a few flies now. 
Um, it's probably around 9 o'clock, um, but towards dark we should have a really good uh, hatch this evening. So as my son Luke said, uh, you're after giant trout on this particular hatch. Um, as a result, uh, you need to be tackled up and prepared for that. Um, these fish, because you're fishing at dark and after dark, they're not leader shy. So I go to a 10 pound test leader. I know folks that even go to 12 pound test. I like a eight and a half or nine foot uh, six weight. And I put on seven weight lines. So I always, if you're fishing a five weight, I'd recommend you use a six weight line. If you're fishing six weight rod, I go with a, a seven weight line. You want a, a weight forward. And the reason that you're going to have your line is because you you're, you don't have a lot of line out to cast. It's not like traditional trout fishing where you might be casting 30 or 40, even 50 feet. Um, so to load your rod properly with, with a very short amount of line on, you uh, need that weight forward, dry fly line. And as I say, I go to one size over because a lot of times I may only have um, 10, 12, 15 feet of fly line out from the tip of my rod. Big secret is uh, to have a fly that's gonna float really, really well. So my flies are uh, um, calf tail wings, white, and hopefully that uh, if you got a little bit of moon or a little bit of light, you might be able to see your fly. Sometimes you don't, but uh, you wanna make sure that uh, um, you have a fly that floats really well. So I start out with the calf tail wings, um, good size, usually number six or four hook. And then I go to a hollow deer hair body and bulk these things up. Now these flies don't need to be pretty. Um, and a lot of times um, a fly of that size and that much bulk, um, they're not the prettiest dry fly that you'll ever tie, but it doesn't matter uh, as long as it looks similar to the uh, fly that you're fishing for, the, the giant hex fly, um, the fly will work. Got a pretty good fish too. Once the sun set and it started to get dark outside, the trout began actively feeding all around us. And before long, John hooked into a nice brown. But unfortunately, it came off just as he was getting ready to net it. Standing up here on the point here, and I heard a good fish in a log. I couldn't get to that one. But then another one right up above that. While I was fishing for that, I had one go right next to me here. So I just let her drift down, sure enough got down there and she took, but uh, had it on for a while, but uh, came on button, so that happens. There's fish going though, so. Well. Not a very big one, but it'll start, so. What we're primarily doing um, when we're fishing, we're fishing without a light. Um, in the pitch black, we're fly fishing, obviously. Um, typically you can't see the fish or you, you can only hear the fish. And so what we're gonna be doing is we're gonna be stalking the riverbanks, um, primarily looking and hearing, or watching basically for fish that are feeding on the surface. Um, once we find them, um, the key to this hatch, and I would say all the beginners um, that are, are, are fishing this hatch, the key is to get as close as you possibly can get to these fish, I would say, uh, without putting them down. Oftentimes I'll get within five to 10 feet of these fish if I'm able to uh, before I start fishing them. Dry fly at night. It's a 20 incher. So we were, uh, got two, three fish going here. Um, had to get in kind of a tough spot here, but uh, managed to get around this bush. Could just get to him, about third drift he took. Um, managed to pull him out of the brush and um, get him into the open current, and there I could play him. And so uh, we got more fish. We got tons of bugs right now. So. Um, fishing actually might get it tough because uh, it's actually more bugs than you'd actually like to see. I just had one slap in the face here, but uh, I'm going to get back to fishing.
John's Nice Brown would be our last fish of the night. And even though this was a below average night for these guys, it was still fun to experience the hex hatch in full force. Special thanks to Luke and John for letting me tag along on a night full of bugs and a few fish here in northern Michigan. Hey everybody, we are here once again at Antlers Fireside Grill just outside of Canadian Lakes area. And Jim, I'm kind of excited about this because this is a wild turkey breast. And so what are you going to kind of do here? you got a, lots of stuff going on. Well, I'm going to show you a way. This is kind of almost like a, uh, like a my rendition of turkey dinner. Okay. So we're going to make a sausage and apple stuffing. And then we've taken the breast and we've, we've pounded it out and made it really thin. Okay. And we're going to roll it in saran and roll it in tin foil. And we're going to throw it in the oven and roast it off. Oh, okay. And then we're going to make kind of a traditional gravy for it afterwards. Okay. Now, when you're dealing with wild turkey, anything people should know? I mean, typically I've heard that it dries out quicker than a normal bird. Is that true? Not true? I mean, yeah, it's going to have less intramuscular fat than a, than a domestic bird's going to have or a regular, you know, farm bird's going to have. Okay. But if you put the sausage in it, it's going to help keep it moist during the cooking process. Okay. We also pounded it down, so that's going to help break down uh, oh, okay. everything that kind of makes it tough. So, All right. Well, how do we get started? We're going to start with sauteing our vegetables. So we've got a little bit of oil. This is going to be a butter-free recipe. Butter-free? Yeah, I know. I, I wasn't. Jeez, oh, I wasn't happy about it either. But. <laughs> All right, Jim. We got our veggies kind of cooked down. What's the next step here? All right. So once we've got the veggies cooked down, we've got some. Uh, this is some croutons that I ground it up here. You can just use regular breadcrumbs. Okay. Doesn't really matter. We've got a little bit of milk. All right. I'm just going to mix that together. Put an egg in there. So this, this is kind of like the, the uh, ingredients that go into a meatloaf, basically. Oh, all right. So we're going to take our sausage. Is that about a, what, half a pound or so? This is actually about a pound. A pound? Mm-hmm. All right. Mm-hmm. Well, I mean, I would think you had your fisherman and hunter strategy there. We were like, that's <laughs> six pounds of meat. Nice. And now we're going to Mix that all together? Yep. OK, so we got this all mixed up now. Yep, so. And we are going to use the oven on this. We are. So we don't always do that here. So how long are we going to be in the oven on this? You know, 350 degrees at your house. I mean, it all depends. It depends on how much stuffing you're putting, how big the turkey breast is, how thin it is. With where we're at, perfect scenario, about 15 to 20 minutes. Okay. Um, and you don't have to do this uh, in the oven. You know, this is something you can do while you're camping because we're going to wrap it in saran, and then we're going to wrap it in tin foil. So tin foil protects the saran from burning off or anything. Oh, okay. So you could, you could actually cook this. In a fire? Oh, absolutely. Anywhere. Okay. All right, Jim, we got our turkey roll just came out of the oven. What are we going to be doing here? Now we're going to make a gravy for it. OK. So we've got the same pan that we sauteed our vegetables and our apples in, so there's going to be a little additional flavor in there, a little residual uh, vegetable. We residual added, goodness. Residual goodness. There you go. And we've got, we added a little bit of butter, so there's a little bit of butter in this recipe. And now we're going to add a little bit of flour, and we're going to make our roux. And what that's going to do is help thicken our gravy to get it to a sauce consistency so it coats the meat. Okay. And what else are we going to put in there? Now we've got a little bit of stock. Chicken stock? Yep, this is just a basic chicken stock. But, you know, if you've saved your bones from your turkey and you want to make a turkey stock, have at her. And kind of what is this called again? Uh, we'll call it a sausage stuffed turkey roulade. Hey everybody, thanks for watching this week. Make sure that you are joining us over the next couple of weeks. There's so much good stuff happening around the state of Michigan right now. And if you missed part of this week's show or maybe last week's show, you can always check us out online at michigandoutdoorstv.com. Full episodes of the show there every week. And if you're ever on YouTube, you can subscribe to our channel there and get an email every time we post something new. Make sure you are joining us over the next several weeks. And if we don't see you in the woods or on the water, hopefully we'll see you right back here next week on your PBS station. Michigan Out of Doors is presented by by Greenstone Farm Credit Services, making recreational land ownership possible across Michigan and Northeast Wisconsin. Begin your land financing journey at one of Greenstone's 37 locations or greenstonefcs.com. 
by EOTech, a Michigan company. Equipping law enforcement and sportsmen alike with quality optics. Creating jobs for Michigan workers. On the web at eotechgear.com. By Huron Lady River Cruises in Port Huron, offering daily sightseeing trips and private cruises for all ages. Sightseers will experience the International Blue Water Bridge, Great Lakes Freighters, the Fort Gratiot Lighthouse, and more. Huron Lady River Cruises on the web at huronlady.com. Closed captioning provided by Randy's Hunting Center, serving Michigan as Ruger and Leupold's National Dealer of the Year, an inventor of Ruger's 450 Bushmaster rifle. When I want a far away, a dream stays with me night and day. It's the road that leads to my home state. I am a Michigan man. Changing seasons paint the scene like rainbow trout in a hidden stream. The white-tailed deer in the tall pine trees. I am a Michigan man. I am, I am a Michigan man. Ask where I'm from and I'll show you my hands. Lord above, I love this land. I am a Michigan man. Down to St. Joe, Kalamazoo, East to Monroe, to St. Marie and back again. I am a Michigan man. I am, I am a Michigan man. That's where I'm from, and I'll show you my hands. Lord above, I love this land. I am a Michigan man. I'm not me, 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 I'm not